We got the tub all in, it's looking great. Okay, now we're gonna show you how to install the wall set. Might take a little bit more time than the tub, but I know you can do it. Let's get started. Now before beginning this installation, you'll want to make sure that your studs are plumb and square. We already checked this when we installed our tub, but if you're just picking up with us here, you'll want to confirm that. There's a couple additional tools that you'll need to move on, so make sure you have everything listed. Other than that, I think we're ready to go. To begin, we're going to add a couple horizontal 2x4s between the center studs on your back wall. Not only will this give us a larger surface for the wall to adhere to later in the installation, it will also provide for a much more rigid wall. So to get going, we're going to take measurements between your back studs here and cut a couple 2x4s to length. Now that I've got my horizontal 2x4s cut, I'm going to go ahead and measure their location between my back studs. I'm going to start with one side, measuring to 47 and a half. Now I have to remember that my tape is sitting on the stud below the tub, so I want it to be subtract an inch and a half to make sure that I get it off of the subfloor itself. Again, measuring this side, 47 and a half minus an inch and a half for the stud, down to 46. And on the other side, I'm going to measure 44 and a half. Again, subtracting an inch and a half back to 43 for that stud my tape is sitting on. And one last time, 44 and a half. Subtract an inch and a half to 43. There. Okay, I've got my two screws drilled on this side. I'm gonna add two more screws on the other side, making sure everything is nice and level with my mark, and then repeat the same steps on this first side. All right, I've got my horizontal braces all screwed in. They feel nice and tight, and we're ready to move on. So we've cut our two door nailers to 57 inches, and now we're gonna mount them to the inside of our studs here. We're gonna mount these two and a half inches off of the tub deck, so I wanna begin by making myself a reference mark up two and a half inches off the tub deck itself. Looks pretty good there. And then we're going to take our door nailer and we're going to screw it in to the inside of the stud like so. Again, making sure it's two and a half inches off the bottom. Now, this is going to overhang just a little bit. It's either going to be 13 sixteenths of an inch or two and three sixteenths of an inch. This dimension will vary according to the model of wall set you purchased, so be sure to check your instruction manual just to know how much to overhang this. In this installation, ours is 13 sixteenths of an inch, and I've already made a couple reference points on my door nailer, just so I know where I'm screwing it in. That looks pretty good, it feels nice and secure. Mm -hmm. Now we're gonna repeat the same steps for the other side. Okay, so our next step before dry fitting our panels on the walls is to cut our plumbing rough-ins out of that one side panel. Now, yours may look a little bit different. Here I have two holes to cut, one for my filler, one for my mixing valve. Uh, I also can't stress this enough. This is a, such an important step to get correct because we can't uncut the holes once we've cut them. When we measure these, I'm gonna measure to the center of where each hole needs to be. First starting coming off the deck of the tub, the flat spot here, up to the center of both holes. And then also I'm gonna measure from my side and the side has to come from this vertical edge of the tub here. We can't measure off the back wall or off the inside of the flange because this space can vary. So our reference point's always gonna be off the vertical edge of the tub itself. So I've made a little bit of a mark there. And I also find it's very helpful to use my level and extend that line further up my vertical stud here because that mixing valve being a little bit further off the deck could be hard to eyeball exactly where that measurement goes. So now I can get a nice exact measurement. Now, before I cut these holes, I also find it's very, very helpful to use some cardboard. I've, here I've used a piece of cardboard off our tub box packaging. I'm gonna pre-cut the holes in the cardboard, then dry fit it with that, just to completely verify that I'm not gonna miscut my holes in my actual wall. Okay, so I've got my cardboard template here, and the first thing I'm gonna do is draw a big arrow on it that signifies which way is up, and then also I'm gonna write front on it. This way, when I take my measurements, I'll know 
my template goes on the wall just like this and I can apply it to my wall before I cut any of the holes. Okay, now that I've got my two locations marked for the centers of each of my holes, I'm gonna go ahead and cut them out using my utility knife. So I've got my cardboard template cut out. Again, I've got my big arrow that points which way's up and also says front. I'm gonna go ahead and dry fit it over my plumbing roughens. And the angle I really wanna watch out for is making sure that this front edge is in line with the tub. I don't have to have these exact, but everything looks to be pretty centered, so I'm pretty confident in my measurements. Now I'm gonna take my measurements and transfer this onto my tub side. Because again, we wanna make sure we get these exactly correct. All right, perfect. I've laid my panel flat on the floor because it'll be that much easier to transfer my measurements to. And I've double and triple checked that I'm about to measure and drill into the correct side panel. So to transfer my measurements, made sure I had the right reference corner here. I'm gonna begin by coming up from the bottom. It may be a little bit hard to get your tape close to the edge, so you wanna get your eye directly over the tape itself and then project that measurement down as close as you can. And I'm gonna come off the side. And one thing to note on the side measurement is you wanna be coming off of this flat face, you don't wanna be coming off the edge of the flange itself. About there. Now it's also a good idea to drill a couple pilot holes before using the hole saw to drill your bigger holes out. You'll notice I've actually set my side up on a couple boards here because the last thing I wanna do is drill into my floor beneath. All right, these holes look pretty good, so we're ready to dry fit this in. Okay, next we're gonna dry fit our panels in place. And to do this, we're gonna begin with the back panel first. This is another spot where it helps to have an extra set of hands. Okay. Perfect, I wanna make sure that it's nice and tight to the bottom of the tub, and it's centered side to side in my space. And we're also gonna to check to make sure that it's nice and level. That looks perfect. All right, next we're gonna drill our pilot holes at each of our stud locations, just like we did for the tub. Now again, you don't only wanna drill through the flange, you don't wanna drill into the stud itself. So. I'm gonna go ahead and place my drill bit in the center of the stud and the flange itself. And then a little bit of a pro tip is, I pull it back a little bit, and then drill right through the center. And that way I haven't drilled into the stud at all. Then once I get all my holes drilled, I'm gonna go ahead and add a screw just in each corner to hold it in place. With our back panel in place, now we're gonna to move to our opposite wall of the plumbing fixtures. Gonna make sure that back flange tucks in behind my back wall. Fits nice and tight. Everything looks good. Now, this is a little different than the back side, but on the side flange, I'm gonna drill five holes equidistant all the way down. So number three will be in the middle, and the last one will be down towards the bottom here. You don't need to measure to be totally precise, just go ahead and eyeball it. All right, just like we did in back, I'm gonna add a couple screws just to temporarily hold this in place. All right, now we're gonna move on to the other side. All right, our last wall is gonna be our plumbing rough-in wall. As I fit this over here, I wanna be careful if I have any plumbing rough-ins, I don't bend them. I set it right behind my back panel there. couple screws to hold it in place. And I think we're all set dry fitting. We're gonna check one more time just to make sure everything stayed level and then move on from there. All right, that looks pretty good. We've checked to make sure all our panels are level all the way around. And now we're gonna make a pencil mark at the top of each of the stud locations above each panel. This will serve as a reference mark after we take all our panels back down again. Now before we take our walls down from our dry fit, now's a great time to measure for a brace that we're gonna construct that will hold everything in place while our polymer sealant is curing. So to begin, I'm gonna go from the flat side of one side panel all the way to the other and get that measurement. And then also from the flat part of my middle of my back panel, right out to about the middle. Now one thing I don't really remember when I'm making my measurements, especially side to side, is I'm gonna plan on putting a towel or cloth between the edges of my brace so I don't scuff 
or uh, mar the edges of my side panels when I'm holding everything in place. I think I got my measurements. Now I'll build my brace. We're now gonna take out our set screws. All right, so we're almost ready to put our wall panels up permanently, but we have one less step to perform before we can do so. It's going to be to apply this fire retardant patch to the backside of our wall panel that we previously cut our holes into. So we're gonna go ahead and spin that around. I'm gonna peel the backing to expose the adhesive side. I'm gonna center my patch directly over my hole. Press that down into place. I'm gonna use my utility knife to cut an X into the patch. And then that way I can work my way around my circle, taking out the excess. Looks pretty good. All right, so we're almost ready to affix our wall set to the walls themselves, and I'm gonna use a polymer sealant to do this. And this polymer sealant I've chosen is one of the ones that's recommended by Delta. It's on a list that's included inside of the box. Now, before we do anything, I wanna make sure that I wipe down my tub deck to make sure I don't have any debris that could cause the seal to not be as strong as we need it to. And then I'm gonna start with my back wall, and I'm gonna use my pencil guides that I made previously as a guide. I don't wanna get any sealant above those pencil lines. Go ahead and apply a bead all the way the down the center of the stud. I'm gonna bring it all the way down right up to the top of the flange of the tub. Now that I have a good bead on my vertical studs, I'm gonna move to applying a bead along the top deck of my tub and I wanna place my bead right in front of the corner, not on the flange itself, but actually on the deck. All right, and finally, I wanna make sure I also get my horizontal bracing studs that I put in earlier in the installation. All right, everything looks good there. I think we're ready to install our back wall. All right, I'm gonna put my end in first to get over this plumbing. Okay. Perfect. I'll swing my side in, pressing it tight back to the wall, and I wanna make sure I press it. Oh, we're stuck on split over here. There we go. All the way down, each of the three studs in that horizontal bracing. Now we're gonna drive in the five screws across the top. And again, before I screw these in, I'm gonna to check to make sure my pencil line Still looks nice and level from where I previously marked it. I think it looks good. Looks good. All right, yep, feels nice and tight. Now we're gonna move on to our sides. It's a very similar process to what we did for the back panel, but for the side panels, we're gonna apply a bead of our polymer sealant to each of the vertical studs, again, staying below our pencil lines, but also to this back corner of our back panel and then along the deck. All right, now here's where I'm gonna apply that polymer sealant to the back corner of my back panel. I wanna keep it closer to the back than the front. Just a thin little bead all the way top to bottom. And finally, one last bead on the deck of the tub, right in front of the corner of the flange. And I think we're ready to put our panel on. Now lift it into place, again, making sure I get that back flange tucked behind my back panel, making sure everything's nice and tight, and then also checking my pencil lines at the top to make sure everything still is level. I'm gonna apply some screws. Now, now's a good time to mention as well, similar to how when we did the tub flange, if you have a gap 
between any stud and the edge of your flange of greater than an eighth of an inch, you're gonna wanna add a little bit of a shim behind there, just so you don't damage the flange when you snug up these screws. And working down the side. All right, everything looks good and snug. We're ready to move on to our last wall. And now we apply the polymer sealant to our last wall. Again, keeping an eye on those pencil marks that I made previously. Stopping just short of the bottom of the nailer itself. Then again, this back edge of the back panel. And then finally, my last bead along the deck of the tub, just short of that corner of the flange. All right, that ought to do it. Now we're gonna put our last wall into place. And watching for our cutouts, tucking it behind our back panel. Make sure everything seems nice and snug. Perfect. Now we're gonna add a couple screws. All right, now with that in place, we're gonna grab our brace, make sure it holds everything tight while the adhesive cures, and then we're ready to move on to installing our door. All right, so now it's time to position our brace. We have two pieces of cardboard that we taped on the ends, that's just what we had on hand, and this will protect our walls when we install the brace. So we're gonna make sure that we put these on studs so that the panels don't bend. And Mike's got another piece of cardboard he's gonna put on his end. We're gonna make sure we get this in here nice and level. Looks good. I think it looks good. Now he's gonna shim it to make sure it's nice and tight. How's that feel? I think it looks good. Perfect, we're gonna give it a little, one little push back against your back wall as well to make sure we're getting a good tight connection on that as well. Okay, great. So now we're gonna wait for the sealant to cure and then we just have one more step and we're done with the walls. All right, our sealant has had time to cure so we're gonna remove our brace. Great, now your walls should feel nice and strong and rigid and ours do. So we'll move on to our last step of caulking the seams. Now that our walls have cured, our final step will be to caulk our remaining seams in our wall set. You can see I've done a little bit of surface prep already by putting some painter's tape down. This will keep my edges a little bit cleaner and a little bit easier on the cleanup side. So I've got my caulk gun ready to go. I'm gonna just pick any place to start. I wanna make sure I get a nice, steady, even flow with no breaks in my bead. A little pro tip here is I always like doing this step by actually pushing my caulk gun up the wall as we go, because so I think the pressure from the bead flows that much deeper into my seam, assuring we've made a good, tight water seal connection. All right, that looks pretty good. I've caulked all my seams along the back walls and then all the way along the deck of the tub as well. My final step is gonna be to go back and smooth out all these lines, and then I'm gonna remove the tape, let everything cure, and we're done. All right, we've got our wall set all installed and everything has dried and cured and looks great. In the next video, we'll move on to installing our curved doors.